Kia ora, good evening. A 20-year-old man is being described as lucky to be alive following a collision at 5.30 this morning that left his car torn in two. The Subaru Legacy left State Highway 1 north of Matora, colliding with one tree before smashing into a second with such force splitting the vehicle. A 20-year-old Matara man was airlifted to Southland Hospital where he was treated for moderate back and chest injuries. Police are investigating whether the condition of the vehicle, alcohol or speed were factors in the collision. Invercargill City Council is moving to identify buildings that may require inspection following the expulsion from the Institute of Professional Engineers of Invercargill engineer Anthony Major. Mr Major was expelled from the ranks of IPENS this week for his conduct during the design and construction of the first Stadium Southland which succumbed to the weight of snow in September 2010. IPENS disciplinary report describes his behaviour as negligent and incompetent. Hunter Andrews asked City Council Chief Executive Richard King whether there had been any prior indication of the IPEN's findings against Mr Major and implications for other structures Mr Major was associated with. Um, yes, we did. We did receive um, advice from the Institute of Engineers some time ago, probably a couple of months ago, whatever, um, but they withdrew that. They asked that that be withdrawn because it was an appeal pending. So there, there was not information that this sort of hearing, this finding could come out? Yes, there was. We did uh, learn of that, but at the request of the professional engineers, they asked that that be withdrawn, the letter, or destroyed, because of the appeal process. That appeal process has now been completed, and uh, we are in the situation now um, where we're extremely concerned that um, when you see the words negligence and competence, then we've got an issue. Why aren't you sitting here with a list? Why aren't we going through a list of these buildings if you have had that prior? The council was aware that something could be coming out uh, that wasn't in favour of Mr Major. Mm. Well, it's not official until the appeal process um, is completed and it's not official until we're formally notified by the Institute of Engineers and that was around about quarter to two yesterday afternoon. And can't you have been meeting? Um, certainly I met with um, uh, uh, Director of Regulatory Services, Pam Gear, Simon Tonkin, and also the City Solicitor yesterday to formulate our response. Um, so off, uh, obviously we've issued our press release and we're saying that if people are concerned, then what they should do is hire a competent engineer to check their properties. Um, and we are also undertaking a search of our own records to identify the projects that Mr Major has been involved in to see if there are any safety issues. Yeah, well, you're talking about negligence in that report or, mm. or one of the findings. Uh, well, the Stadium Southland was very much a public building. Yes. Uh, we, are there, is it possible that he could have been involved in others? I'm thinking about Splash Palace and other, uh, perhaps other buildings, large projects around the city. Yes, well, I think it, obviously the... Um, the building was designed, as far as the stadium, it was designed around 2000, or completed in 2000. So there could be an issue between, uh, from that date, right up to around about 2010. When the existing stadium collapsed, from that point on, any building over a million dollars we required a peer review of. In other words, you have a competent engineer design the structure, we wanted that peer reviewed. And I think Tony lost his accreditation um, in 2011, so any work that Tony has submitted, whatever value, we've also required a peer review of it. But there could be an issue prior to 2010, and that's what we're searching our records for, to see um, what buildings Tony has been involved with. And obviously we'll look at the high priority areas, starting with uh, public buildings. What will the time frame be for that? Well. Um, the um, information technology manager is preparing a report now for me. I hope to have it in about half an hour, maybe an hour, and then we'll plan a course of action. We'll also um, speak with Tony and ask him if he can supply us with the records of the buildings that he's been involved with, just to make sure that we don't miss anything and take it from there. Has he been cooperative? Um, well, I haven't specially spoken to Tony, so we will be in contact today with him. Winter flu cases are rising and are yet to peak, prompting government to extend the availability of the free flu vaccine programme. 
Hospitals are likely to see more people with influenza, according to Associate Health Minister Joe Goodhue, after surveillance revealed winter flu cases are still rising. The free flu vaccine program was due to be funded until the end of July, but has now been extended until the end of August. This winter, AH1N1 appears to be the most common strain of influenza, which is covered in the vaccine. Across the country, almost 1.9 million flu vaccines have been distributed so far this season. Breaking into the massive Indian meat market is afoot with Alliance Group delivering the company's first container of high-cut meats into what's becoming one of the world's largest economies. The high-value lamb products are destined for five-star hotels and high-level food service retail outlets. Partnering with Quality New Zealand, Alliance is utilising a network of New Zealand cricketers to promote lamb products ahead of the Cricket World Cup next year. It's been a long, slow process to go through the regulatory sort of um, issues and with India and, and would still like a free trade agreement to, to be, um, I suppose, negotiated over time and that will happen. But there has been a lot of red tape. They've re worked really hard to go through uh, dealing with government officials, custom people, import um, um, licence holders. So we've done all the hard work, so now it's really time for action and, and hopefully get some product in there. And it's not just uh, beef that, or sorry, New Zealand lamb that they're trying to promote into India. There's a whole range of products. No, the concept was driven under Quality New Zealand um, uh, umbrella. Um, they're looking at other products and they're developing meat first, which is under the Alliance Pure South brand. But wine, cheese, lobster, water, um, salmon are other uh, products they're looking at as well. And you've strategically aligned yourselves with a number of cricket players to try and get some traction in India. Yes, Quality New Zealand has been adopted around uh, cricket principles and obviously of any market that we deal with around the world, um, I think business and sport is one where India, um, I think you can uh, have some sort of crossroads and we've got, yes, Daniel Vittori is an investor in Quality New Zealand, uh, Stephen Fleming, uh, Brendan McCullum and they've just uh, uh, recently announced uh, Richard Hadley as an ambassador and all those guys are relevant in India at the moment. They're playing that IPL competition and Stephen Fleming's a coach. Um, so it is relevant at the moment and we think it's a good linkage for our business. It's working the other way too. They are bringing on Indian cricketers to be part of this also. Yes, they're trying to develop some key and there's a guy Rahul Dravid that is a, just a recently retired uh, test cricketer, very successful uh, cricketer uh, in India and he's also part of the business. If, um, potentially what sort of market um, share do you think you might end up with at that top end? Well there's not much um, New Zealand land going in there at all obviously um, but, but I think in terms of uh, with, with population growth a lot more middle class people We've got money to spend. Uh, we want them to have a good experience eating lamb. So I think progressively it, it could be a good share. They eat a lot of um, um, buffalo beef. They're a big buffalo beef producer. But I, I think lamb will become more prominent. As the, as the Indian people are becoming more wealthy, are they changing the way that they are eating? I think like uh, a lot of countries where, and especially those um, those Eastern style countries, are looking at more Western style cooking. Um, their cultures, younger people are uh, you know different, uh, educated a little bit differently, and they're prepared to probably expand away from their their, their normal cultural styles of eating and it's, it's probably like New Zealanders we're doing the same they're prepared to, to test other types of, of eating habits. Stay with us still to come Invercargill's Jazz Time dancers perform at Disneyland plus children get creative in South Invercargill. Welcome back. Visiting Minister for Tertiary Education Stephen Joyce says the re region's main tertiary provider, SIT, is offering students the right training opportunities to meet the requirements of the region's employers. Mr Joyce has also praised the Institute's innovative distance learning initiatives and the opportunities being offered further afield to international students. Oh, I think SIT does a good job for, for the region uh, and uh, I, I always test that when I come to town. I ask business people you know, how their Polytech is going and I think uh, Penny and the team here do a good job. Uh, they're well aligned to what the region needs and they're pretty innovative with some of their uh, distance learning as well. They do a good job of attracting international students into the city and the region and that's not just good from a student's point of view but they're bringing in people who, you know, many who stay around afterwards and uh, help fill up some of the jobs that the region's pretty good at producing. So I actually think they're doing a good job and I like to come in and check the temperature every now and then and uh, make sure they're continuing uh, to be focused on uh, on the things that they should be focused on and they seem to be doing that. So you think those courses are relatively well targeted here for their demands locally? I think so, yes. And that's the challenge always, is to make sure that when you've got a tertiary provider in a region that they're delivering uh, for, the, for the local businesses and what the locals need, uh, as well as some of the courses that you can't get anywhere else. And you know, they're dealing with uh, two sorts of learners, those that 
uh, being prepared for the local workforce and those that for whatever reason can't travel to do other study and um, they've got to supply those people with uh, study opportunities well I think they're doing a good job. Almost 30 dancers returned to the south today after winging their way to Hong Kong and the United States. 28 female dancers and one male from Jazz Time Dance Studio along with a 10 strong support crew have returned today after 13 days away. During the trip the dance troupe performed at Disneyland and it was the first trip abroad for 30 of the team members and the first flight for one. Student fund raised $60,000 for the trip that included sites in Chiang Mai, Hong Kong and Macau with cultural highlights, elephant riding and playing with tigers. They also visited a girls' orphanage in Chiang Mai and exchanged dance cultures. As part of South Alive's community art initiative, holiday school ch students have been attending art workshops in South City. Over the week, 40 students have been tutored in many aspects of practical art. Today, it was self-portraits. They're working with um, their own self-portraits, um, working uh, with drawing first and teaching, teaching children how to um, actually put a face together. And um, from there, from their drawings, they're working uh, with uh, putting their drawings, the next step is to put them onto canvas and to paint their, paint their images. So they've started with a photo of themselves? Yes, they have, yes. And uh, they've also had some teaching on how to construct a face and put a, put a face together where the eyes go, mouth goes and the nose goes, etc. And it makes, it makes it, the picture, the image look much more real for the person and um, then they've, they feel they're really achieving in, in producing their portrait. Now usually you're tutoring with Southland Education, of course, yeah. in the WEA building, but you yes. felt it important to get out and, and um, teach these kids some art? Oh, very much, yes. They, they could be our future artists, and um, I very much uh, want to encourage young people to go forward in their creative talent, using their creative talents, and um, take that on into adulthood. And, so, and, and this is all part of Kids, Kids South? Yes, it is. Yes, that's right. And the, what have you seen so far? What do you think? The well, talent I, here? I actually feel quite excited. <laughs> um, there, there's some, what I see is genuine budding artists amongst the, the group. And, uh, and that doesn't mean that uh, not every, everybody will go on to into the arts, but that they will always be, have a creative aspect. They will always bring out in their future lives. And that's what I'd like to see. And that's all from us this Thursday. Sport follows the weather next. From the news team, good night.